Father, Lord, we come before you this morning to thank you for your love and mercy, to bless you for your goodness to us, to thank you that, Lord God Almighty, we are your children. You have called each of us by name that we might know you, that we might walk in you, that we might, oh God, be grafted in you, and be king of kings, those that bear fruit. King of kings, Lord God of heaven and earth, we, your children, come to present ourselves before you this morning. We come to you, Lord God Almighty, for without you, we cannot do anything. We come to thank you, Lord God Almighty, for yesterday's fruitfulness, for the days past, Lord God Almighty. We come to bless you, Lord God, my Father, who has invited us into this Lenten season, into this season, Lord God, my Father, of prayer and fasting. Who are we that you have called us? Above all, who are we that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you enable us? Blessed be your holy name. We glorify and we lift you up. We come to you, Lord God Almighty, who has accepted us as we are, that you might transform us, Lord God, my Father, to be those instruments, those vessels that you will use in your kingdom and in your vineyard. We come before you, Lord God Almighty, King of Kings, our creator, to repent, Lord God, my Father, for all the times when we have not lived up to what you have expected of us. We have not applied our talents, the talents you blessed us with in your kingdom. We have not used the skills, the different giftings, Lord God, my Father. We come to you to ask our oh God for mercy this morning. How can we stand in your presence? How can we present ourselves when there is darkness in us? And so, Lord, we come to repent. We come to repent for opening doors that have defiled us. Lord God Almighty, we have come to, to repent, Lord God Almighty, for opening doors that have defiled others, even our workplace, even the church, even our families, even the land upon which we walk. King of glory, when we have not testified about your goodness. You are our God, you are our King. Lord God Almighty, today we desire to see you. King of glory, we desire, Lord God Almighty, to walk in you. We desire to fulfill the purpose for which you created us. And so, Lord, we come to repent. We plead the blood of Jesus, Lord God Almighty. We are asking that you wash us with the washing of the blood of Jesus. That, Father, when the enemy comes, he will not find anything on us, O oh God. That in everything, indeed, we shall be the kind of people you desire us to be, bearing fruit more than conquerors in the name of Jesus, being a fountain of deliverance to ourselves, our families, our workplaces, King of Glory, the church, and even to strangers. That King of Kings will be able to execute the great commission to the glory of your name. We bless you, Lord God Almighty, and we glorify you. This day, as we go about the work that you have assigned us, we come to ask that, Lord God Almighty, you release the power of your Holy Spirit upon us, that in everything we do, we will not do it with our own power, Father Lord, but that we shall be inspired of your Holy Spirit. Take charge, King of glory. Post support, Lord God, my Father, from the sanctuary. Help from your sanctuary. So that, Lord God Almighty, King of glory, whatever we have as two fish and five loaves will be multiplied in the spirit to feed, to provide spiritual food, to provide physical food, to provide encouragement and strength to those that are discouraged. Lord God Almighty, even today, that those that have been written off will also be acceptable in your sight. We desire, Lord God Almighty, to learn to have genuine repentance so that, Lord God Almighty, everything about us will impact every place we walk in, that in every way, Lord, we shall be moving altars unto Christ, scattering the darkness in every place that we go. We worship you, we exalt you, and we lift you up. And so this morning, Lord, we come 
that King of Kings in every way, we shall be offering, able to offer worship that is in spirit and in truth. That everything about us will be about worshiping you. Will be about glorifying you. Will invite other people. Will invite all creation to bow down and to worship you. That Father, Lord God Almighty, you will use us, King of Kings, as praise and worship leaders in everything we do. Whether on our desks, Lord God, my Father, whether in the transactions that we do, whether in the praying for others, that in everything, Lord God Almighty, we shall release King of Glory, living water from our bellies, that it will not be about us, but it will be about Christ. We worship you and we exalt you. We thank you for this week, that is work week that is ending today. Thank you for enabling us to take children to school. Thank you for enabling us to get to work and back home safely. Even this day, you who has begun this great work in us will bring it to completion. We worship you. We exalt you. And we lift you up. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Uh, Alan, do you have a Bible with you? Yes, I do. Can you read for us the passage for today? Luke chapter 19. Right on. Verses 1 to 10. 1 to 10. Yes. Luke 19, verses 1 to 10. Yes, I have. Thank you, Aunt Carol, for bailing me out. My network was a problem, but thank you. The, um, the topic is the power of genuine repentance. Our reading is from Luke 1, chapter 19, 1 to 10. Zacchaeus, the tax collector. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but being short, uh, being a short man, he could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter. He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possession to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody, out of anything, I'll pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house because this man too is the son of Abraham. For the son of man came to seek and to save what was lost. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Amen. Thank you for... Thank you for reading this portion of scripture for us. Today we see that all of us come from somewhere. Like Zacchaeus, we have a background. The Lord found us somewhere in a place which would not be a place even of blessing. When we look at this portion of scripture, verse one says that Jesus was going through Jericho. As he was going through Jericho, he, en he encounters a man called Zacchaeus. But what is it about Jericho in the history of Israel? Jericho was the first city that the Israelites destroyed as they entered the promised land. And as they destroyed Jericho, they were commanded to devote its wealth to God as the first fruit of all battles to be fought in the land. And that is what happened. The wealth of Jericho was devoted to God. 
Of course, while Israel had purposed to obey the Lord, one of them decided to hide a portion of the wealth for himself other than giving it to God, other than obeying the command. And this brought a destruction, brought trouble to the children of Israel. When something is dedicated as the first thing to God, it's like a tithe. Whenever we have eaten the tithe or tampered with the tithe, we open doors of lack. And so you find that whereas the promise is, I'll open the floodgates of heaven, it will turn around the other way to close the floodgates of heaven. And so this is what happened in Jericho. Now, after Jericho had been destroyed, Joshua even put a curse on it that it would only be rebuilt at the cost of the firstborn son. Its walls would be rebuilt at the cost of the firstborn son and its gates set up at the cost of the last born son. And this actually came to pass in 1 Kings chapter 16. We actually see that King Hail rebuilt the walls of Jericho at the cost of his first born son, Abiram, and his last born son, Sekub. This was the, the, the place that Jesus was passing. And this was the place that Zacchaeus lived in. What was Jesus doing in that place? Jesus was on his way. He was on his way to Bethany because he had heard the message that Lazarus had died. So he was on the way to go and mourn with the sisters of Lazarus, but also he was on his way to raise Lazarus from the dead. So in his agenda to go and raise Lazarus, he meets an individual called Zacchaeus. We meet Zacchaeus in, chapter, in verse two. Who was Zacchaeus a Jew? What was he? He was a short man, short of stature, where he lived in a, in a city under a curse. What was his calling? Bible commentaries describe him as a chief among the publicans. He would be considered as a, a senior tax collector or a receiver general of taxes. Mm -hmm. Who had other Republicans, or sorry, his other publicans under him? He was a man of authority. He was a chief and he was a rich man. This rich man, this tax collector, this reject of community, of society, this one for whom everybody had a complaint, mm, the way he did his work. Not only did he live in a place that was cursed, but the way he also did his work left a lot to be desired. But this individual, short as he was, unrecognizable by his stature, but recognizable by the things that he did not do well, desired to see Jesus. And so in verse three, you see that Zacchaeus desired to see the Lord. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. Now, transformation begins with the desire to know Christ. He desired to see this Christ that he had heard so much about. While other people's curiosity divide, drove them to devise ways to avoid or to injure Jesus, Zacchaeus, on the other hand, did not want to disappoint his curiosity. He wanted to see this man. He wanted to be among those who know Jesus. He wanted to be able to talk about him, that I saw him too. Now, because of this desire, he puts into action everything to ensure that he can actually see Jesus. What does he do? He runs ahead, climbs on a sycamore fig tree to see him. 
because he knew Jesus was coming that way. Now, as he runs, what happens? Zacchaeus forgets his position as the chief of publicans. He forgot his status as a chief tax collector. He ran like a boy and climbed up a tree. A senior government official running to climb up a tree. He forgot himself. His desire was to gain sight of this great man who had done so many things, for whom he had had, had healed the sick, had raised the dead, and so many other things driven out demons. A person he had heard of Jesus, who without a treasury of his own, as we would see it, was able to do multiple things beyond what the wealth of Zacchaeus and the position of Zacchaeus could do. It's like when we look around and we say we pay taxes, but our education system, the quality of the systems, social services remains wanting. With all the money that we collect, we still see a lot of gaps. And then we see the senior tax collectors, the commissioners, the, and all those, and everybody in between. But these people, if it were in our, in our situation today, you would maybe see the Commissioner General of, of Uganda Revenue Authority running to climb a tree because he wants to see Jesus. This is the desire that we want to see among all our leaders, running to do everything, forgetting themselves for the sake of Christ. Zacchaeus had to go through a difficult position. Imagine all those crowds around him, short as he was, he had to break through. Even there was opposition for him to be able to see by nature of his stature. Sometimes we find ourselves limited in many ways, but the Lord provides the simple things around us. Simple things for us to climb on. Maybe one teacher, maybe one orphan, maybe to be able to see the Lord, even sometimes difficult situations. And so when we look at verse three, five and six, Jesus reaches the spot and looks up at him. And what did Jesus say? Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. And what does Zacchaeus do? He comes down and welcomes Jesus. The word of God tells us that God honestly rewards those who seek him. God rewards those that seek him honestly. Christ looked up into the tree and saw Zacchaeus. He noticed Zacchaeus' heart's desire. That desire in Zacchaeus caused Jesus to invite himself into Zacchaeus' house. That look opened up the heart of Zacchaeus and caused it to incline to receive Jesus. The word of God says the heart of a king rests in God's hand and he guides it like a river course. On that day, the king of salvation, the Lord of glory, guided the heart of Zacchaeus like a river course. Oh, may the Lord guide our hearts. May the, our hearts be held in his hands that we too will be guided of him like a river course. A river course does not complain whether it is running through rocks, whether it's running through a valley, whether it's running over falls, it does not, it just flows. May the Holy Spirit of God touch our hearts that we will flow with the love of the Lord, with worship, with obedience, with excellence in the things that we do. And so, Whatever Zacchaeus received that day from Christ was honor to great, far above what Zacchaeus merited. Grace, it wasn't for what he had done. It was because the Lord saw his desire. The desire alone pulled Jesus to him. Whatever Zacchaeus received was beyond what he could even think of or imagine. What no I had seen and not what no ear had had. 
That day in Jericho is what Zacchaeus received. We see here that Jesus is encouraged to deal with the weak things of our lives. Our willingness is all that will open a door. We see Zacchaeus' curiosity leading him to sing eye to eye with Jesus, having a conversation with him and going with him into his house to dine with him. Zacchaeus had a mind to know Christ and to be known by Christ. Here we see that those that are faithful in little shall be entrusted in more. The joy that Zacchaeus received became his strength. He was overjoyed by the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord became Zacchaeus' strength. It released the power for Zacchaeus to respond to Christ with a, the power of genuine repentance. What does Zacchaeus do? He hastens. He comes down in excitement to receive Jesus joyfully in his house, but also in his heart. Lord, may our hearts be open. We declare to the hearts of the walls, and the gates of our hearts, be lifted up and the king of glory comes in. Lord, today, may the king of glory come into our hearts and that may his, the joy of his presence be our strength. That this salvation that we have chosen, this repentance that we have come in, Will King of Glory bring glory to your name, bring joy to your heart that you will make a declaration for us as you did for Zacchaeus. All this is happening in verse 7. We see that while all this joy is coming to Zacchaeus' heart, there is that that is happening around him. All the people saw this and began to mutter. He has gone to be with a guest to be a guest of a sinner. <laughs> eh, how many times have we been disqualified from the kingdom of God? By human beings, even in the church, she is not good enough. He is not good enough. We know his past. We know his story. We know what she has done before. She has this weakness. But Zacchaeus was not derailed by those who judged him. He did not listen to those Jews who were muttering, calling him a sinner and, and actually judging Christ for going to be with a sinner. He was a publican. Many of us have seen people of a certain practice and we have all a certain profession and we have lumped them all as bad people. In this case, it was a tax collector. All tax collectors are bad. They are all thieves. Hey, people from this region are like this and like that. Oh, men are like this. Hey, women are like this. Mm -hmm. The young people of these days. Wow. We lump them together. But you see, Zacchaeus did not allow these people's conversation to influence his narrative, if anything. He was clear-headed about what he had wanted, what his desire was, that whatever he did was to change the narrative. Let's stop condemning people in lamp stamps. Let's not be the judges of who people are. We can judge an action, but let us not condemn people. Even when we do so, when we speak to them, or if we are going to take an action, let it be in gentleness and respect. When God sits as the judge, he does not invite us there as the jury. Never. He doesn't need a jury. So let's remain in our lane. Though Zacchaeus was a sinner, God allows room for repentance. For us, Turn back to him, and so we must. When we look at verse 8, before we get to verse 8, we see that Zacchaeus' desire 
was now to please Jesus. When he had invited him into his house, his desire was to please Jesus. That Jesus would have a permanent smile on his face concerning this son of Abraham. Those that Jesus calls must come down, must humble themselves, must not think to climb to heaven by their own righteousness. We must make haste to come down. For when we remain up there, if Zacchaeus had remained up that tree, supposing the branch had broken, anything could have happened. Supposing he had fallen on. When we stay in a place too long up there, circumstances can come cause us to fall down and fall to injury. Jesus says to us in Revelation, behold, I stand at the door and knock. He entered Zacchaeus' house. He told him, today I'm coming to your house. He was knocking at Zacchaeus' heart and there was Zacchaeus opening himself to the Lord. The repentance that was at the root of Zacchaeus' heart had to do with everything to please the Lord. And so what does he do? Pleasing God, genuine repentance, the power of genuine repentance brings a total up turnaround. This repentance is the kind of repentance that causes us to change our ways, change our workplace, change our sphere of influence, change our homes. Previously, this Zacchaeus had been laying up treasure for himself. But as verse 8 goes, he says, it says, But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I'll pay back four times the amount. That is the power that we receive that causes genuine repentance. So instead of laying up pressure for himself, when he meets Jesus, he resolves that for the future, he will always do everything to ensure he does, puts right what went wrong and continue to do what is wrong, what is right. He did not give just by his will. The joy of the Lord was his strength. The joy and the desire to please Jesus. And so what does Zacchaeus do? He has to go to get rid of his extravagant expenses because this extravagant life contributed to all his thefts and the way he was collecting his money, sometimes through dishonest practices. Now, he's, he decides to put back whatever he had stolen. We actually find that in Exodus chapter 22 and verse 1, we find that that is the price of restitution. He is obeying the law, that he will restore fourfold what he has taken. That was what was required of a thief when found out. Zacchaeus testifies of himself that he has done wrong. He has misused his office. He has imposed upon others the weight, the oppression of carrying taxes that they should not. John the Baptist had warned the publicans. He said they had the ear of government and stretched in favor of government revenue and sometimes even used revenue or tax collection as a means of gratifying their vengeance upon the people for whom they had ill will. So there are people who impose taxes on other people in order to, to ensure that their business fails, in order that they can lose their property, other than just taking what is required of them. But once they know so and so, that one's business must fail. And with a wickedness in the heart, they go out to build. But the Lord goes even with, after those kind of people. God hates robbery. And yet we find that these are some of the offerings we bring to church. We have 
stretched the, the, the boundary marks, stolen land, disenfranchised orphans, received money from, from wicked gain, and then we bring it to the sanctuary as an offering. God hates it. It's an abomination. It is hypocrisy to give out what is not ours, to think that we are generous, and yet we are actually using abominations, saying we are building the house of God. But we want to turn back to Christ, how Christ the, touches the heart of this man, and through genuine repentance, he's putting things in order. Restitution out of gratitude. We find a man who comes before God, not because of trouble, but because of the grace and the favor of God. He did not wait to be called like the rich young man who goes away sad because the cost of following Jesus is too much. This man of low stature, is a, of a short man, this man with all kinds of accusations against him, is rejoicing. As he rejoices, his house receives blessings. As he is blessed, Jericho receives blessings. Can you imagine being in a, a cast territory and you are being blessed? That is only the power of genuine repentance. And so what does Jesus do? He testifies. Jesus himself testifies about Zacchaeus. He says today, in verse 10, verse 9, today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. Wow. From being a reject, from being acknowledged as a wicked man, the Lord testifies for Zacchaeus. He testifies that Zacchaeus is now a converted man. He is saved from his sin. He is saved from the burden of guilt, from the power of sin that so entangles, that so hinders, that so deforms. He is benefiting from the gift and the blessings of salvation. He is called the son of Abraham, receiving the power to teach his household to keep the way of the Lord. In Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 9, says that he that is greedy brings trouble to his house and brings a curse about, upon him. And in verse uh, two, 3 of Psalms 1, 112 says, but he that is charitable to the poor does kindness to his own house and brings a blessing upon it, even salvation. When we look at the situation of the young man that Jesus asked to give up his wealth to follow Christ and how this young man went away sad and we compare this to the situation of Zacchaeus. Let us not wait to be sad because we have been called. Let us seek the Lord while he may be found so that we know that whatever is in our hands is for the service of the Lord. Whatever it is that we have not done right, let it be put right so that we have no hindrance upon us. When we look at the situation of Zacchaeus, he did not have to become a prodigal son to be reduced to nothing before turning to God by, because of adversity. Let us come to God as we are with what we have and let him sort us out. Let him remove everything, every chaff, may, so that we remain clean, washed, vessels acceptable for use in the kingdom of God. Without chaff, seeds willing to die, that there will be more abundant a harvest in the house of the Lord. As I conclude, I'd like to share a few lessons from Zacchaeus' experience. When we look at this passage, this straightforward passage that the Lord gave us, that is documented in this portion of scripture. One, we see that Zacchaeus teaches us 
that when you make a solid effort to experience Jesus, you will be rewarded. Let us seek the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our strength. Let us love the Lord with all our soul, with all our heart, with all our strength. For in loving the Lord that way, we will also love our neighbors and do what is right. We will be able to give back what belongs to others. We will be able to take care of those who are disadvantaged around us. Two, don't make a judgment based on appearance. <laughs> Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, than the way he looked. Many times we judge people, we even don't want to look at them, say, ah, that one cannot fit in our circles, that one cannot stand with us. That one, we always find something with which to judge people because of their fear appearances. I don't think that one can even pay the money that we are asking for. He cannot even make a contribution in the church, no. Far too often we make judgments about people based on how they look or how they act. This makes it as important in unable to help someone change their lives. Let us not do that. It makes us even unable to involve others in ministry. We reject the people of God and yet God is sending them to us. Let's not three, do not make a judgment based on reputation. Many times we have seen someone in the past and we continue carrying that negative narrative with us concerning that person, not knowing that the Lord has already transformed them. We do not even ask them if they have come to the Lord. But the only testimony we carry is the testimony that the devil has concerning them. And all the time we are talking about this person, this person has already received the Lord. Let us not be found to be bearing false witness. Let us ask the Holy Spirit for, let us ask the Holy Spirit to give us revelation and insight with which to relate with other people. Let us ask the Holy Spirit to help us so that we are able to walk with even those who are difficult of character or difficult of behavior or have a flaw on their lives because Jesus came to seek and save those that were lost. Just like he saved Zacchaeus, let us be willing to go out on this great commission. The great commission and the mission is always to those who are lost. Ministries to us within, ministries to the body of Christ, ensuring that none of us is lost, ensuring that we are encouraged. But mission, we go out. We go out to seek and save, that we may save the Lord, lost, that we may be willing to walk in the vineyard of God. When we ask for the power of the Holy Spirit, we ask for the power of revelation. Ananias, to be able to go and see Saul, <laughs> for whom he was so afraid of. Ananias was asked by God to go and find Saul that time when he was blind. And he was going to be the instrument of Saul's healing. The fear that Ananias had. If Ananias had walked in the attitude that this man is a write-off, he's a, someone who is persecuting the church, I do not want to do anything. Oh, how would have delayed the writing of the largest portion of the New Testament. And so he was just a man of power waiting to be unleashed to be transformed from Saul to Paul. There are many waiting for us. We, the sons of God and daughters of God to do the work of God. Let us therefore focus on seeking and saving the lost. That is what brought Christ. That is why he called us that we would be his witnesses in Jerusalem, Samaria, sorry, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Each of us has our own Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and ends of the earth that he has assigned to us. 
We are surrounded by people all the time. There are those that are grumbling. There are those that are accusing. Let's not be found among them, but let us be found among those that are seeking and saving the lost. God bless you as you go out to serve this morning, as you trans as the Holy Spirit leads us in the place of transformation, as the Holy Spirit encourages us in every way to have a total turnaround, a total transformation in the way we do our things, the way we relate with others. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name, have prayed. Amen. Amen. Back to you, Ali. Thank you. Amen. 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 Thank you, Aunt Carol. Thank you. Amen. For, Amen. Thank you for helping us to, as a teacher, as a communicator, you know, because uh, Aunt Carol was among those four good communicators in Uganda who uh, the US government, she communicates. I love her for the background of a teacher and communication. Uh, let's receive this word. Our God and our Father, we thank you. Thank you that you are helping us to understand that repentance must be genuine. It is a necessity and it's good for us. So, Lord, we thank you for your servant, Caroline Asher's daughters. Lord, bless her. Refill her. Refill her such that she will again give us more teachings. Lord, bless her household, bless her children, bless her husband. Overflow in the Holy Spirit. Lord, in the gifting of teaching. So we receive this word as personal people who have logged in today. We receive this word for our households that we need to bring repentance genuine from our hearts. We receive this word for our communities. We receive this word for the church that, Lord, repentance is mandatory. So, Lord, we, as we receive this word, Lord, we are reminded that repentance is key in everything. And so, Lord, we come before you to again revive our hearts to repentance. Thank you, our Father and our God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. I thank God for this topic because it's one of the areas where we find difficulty. Most people say this intercessors, repentance, repentance, repentance. Uh, this Father Hillary, Reverend Christian, every day about repentance. Yeah. Now they have had a canon, Rebecca, all the time repentance. We need to repent. Repent, repent every day, every day, every day, every day, because we fall every day. As we go to work, as we begin at home, you're angry. Sometimes it's a, it is a day jam. Sometimes it's a work. So repent, genuine repentance, genuine repentance. It brings peace and brings joy. And so this morning, as uh, Carol, Carol was teaching, and um, I realized that all of us are, are Zacchaeus. Tell yourself that I am Zacchaeus. Because at any one time, there's something that is challenging. Not only the tax collector in, uh, that, that has something to repent of. We need to seek the Lord. We need to seek the Lord. And by seeking the Lord, we need to run ahead of people who will derail us. Because sometimes our steps are short. We are short ourselves. And, you know, your shortness can be that uh, in your family, it's a very difficult thing when you get saved there. Your shortness can be your surrounding. Your shortness can be your company. So if you're short because every day you have to go to Rotary and then keep the, the, the midweek service not done, if your surrounding is that you have to go to the bar and then you cannot pray with the family, you climb the sycamore tree. By climbing the sycamore tree is that you leave those things because Zacchaeus had to, to run ahead and he left the crowd. So leave the crowd. Father God, we thank you that, Lord, we need to, to get the skills of, of Zacchaeus to run to the, to the nearest sycamore tree. 
my God. Yes, my, my network is bad, but let me get to the door again. Lord, we ask you that you help us, help us and get us to the Sikabot trip so that we are able to see the Lord. We need to see the Lord. Just as the scripture said, I have seen the Lord like Mary Magdalene. We need to see the Lord. We need to see the Lord in our families. We need to see the Lord in our work. We need to see the Lord in our farming. We need to see the Lord in our investments. Lord, help us, help us so that, Lord, we are not destroyed. Lord, there are things that are coming from our generations that have made our lives, our families to be Jericho, that have brought curses, that have brought derailment, that have brought barrenness in our lives, in our communities. We now ask that, Lord, because of us, friends, you might be the only person who will bring blessing to your office, bring blessing to your father's house, bring blessing to your tribe, to your clan. Yes, I'm encouraging you this morning, be a Zacchaeus. Don't get derailed because there are people who are saying you're a sinner. Run ahead. Lord, we ask that we pray for your children, that they will run ahead for the deliverance of their communities, the deliverance of the church, the deliverance of the nation, the deliverance of their father's houses, their own houses. Be exalted, O oh Lord. Be worshipped. Be glorified. In Jesus' name, I pray. You know, Carol said that Jericho was dedicated to the Lord. It was totally destroyed and cast. But you know, that destruction when he was passing now, because I mean the, the, the destruction of Jericho by, by Joshua was flat and you cannot raise it again. It is only Jesus who raises dead things. Mm. I repeat, it is only Jesus who raises dead situations. Mm. A marriage which is breaking, Jesus will raise it. A child in drugs, Jesus will raise him. I yes, have sir. a testimony of a child who had been in drugs. But let me tell you, even his father left him and said, get away from my niece's house. But today he's preaching the word of the, first of all, he got a degree of international relations in my house and he's preaching. So dead situations are revived by the Lord. So in which situation? Is it your promotion delay? Is it your payment that you have supplied? Especially now, no money in the government, but others have money to do other things. Don't worry. Don't mind about the iron sheets. Don't mind about the homosexuals. They will not beat us in Jesus' name. The Lord is giving us new armors. We shall climb the sycamore tree and see those guys, and we shall come down and we, say, we shall deal with this issue. So in, in everything, you must be willing. And Carol said, transformation begins by you being willing. Be willing. Be willing. Be willing to be taught. Be willing to go to Bible study. Be willing to go to, 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 to prayer school. Don't judge prayer school when you have not gone there to know what is there. You first start. If you see things are wrong, then you go. But don't judge others. Don't judge. You know, those praying people there, they can waste our time. Don't judge others. They judge Zacchaeus. But today, let's, let's desist from judging. Those it is there, drunkards. Those Banyankole, proud. You know, those women there, they are always, uh, those men, you know, those old saints. And in all saints, you judge us in the, in the seventh Saturday service. Those guys who drive many cars than they, their tires can buy. Eh. And yes, we, we also pray at eight o'clock. Those, those nine o'clock, who, nine Saturday, who shout, shout, hey, leave them to shout. Hey, those midday people, dead service. So us amongst ourselves, judge ourselves, desist from judging services, judging how we pray. Uh, encourage me, encourage me where, I'm, where, where, where I am. Like the Lord encouraged Zacchaeus, come down, come down, come down. Come down, ladies. Come down, men. Come down, children. We are all children of God. So as this man repents, um, uh, Zacchaeus, genuinely, he says, if I've stolen, I give, he's giving back to the poor, first of all. And if he has stolen, he will refund. So it is good to repent. 
And when you repent, the master himself blesses you. Repentance is not only public. It starts by private and then also public, if you need to do a public declaration. But there are some repentance you must be in your altar and deal with it because of the sake of your father's house. So please, just, just, just repent, just repent. My God and my father, we bring repentance for judging others especially. We have judged many people. We brought judgment on, on people as sinners. Others we say, will that will anything come out of them? Others we've said, can they manage? Others we have, we have checked out them. Where are they coming from? They cannot be in our, in our, in our council. They cannot be in our church. Lord, it is very clear that now people are running back to the Anglican church. And so sometimes we judge people when they come. Lord, help us to take them. Help us to listen to them. Help us to, to, to see them the way you saw Zacchaeus. Help us to, 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 to make them understand and, 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 and know what the way is. Our God and our Father, we thank you because you've been our only help in times of need. Just as Zacchaeus is a child of Abraham, we are also children of Abraham. And even the lost, Lord, be merciful to us. The other thing Aunt Carol said, huh, I hope Joy, Joy, Joy was listening and she's, she was just happy. The Great Commission. We must do the Great Commission. Jesus came to seek the lost. And we also must bring people to church. First of all, even let's not think about the people who are not saved. There are people who have backslid and have fallen. They went from COVID and they have gotten lost. If you know such a person, get up, ring them, text them, go to their home. It is your business. It is your duty to go and fetch them. I am assigning you as head girl. You go and get your friend who has gone away. Check whether they're in Lueza. Check whether they're in the local church where they shifted. Because some of them say, ah, no. Uh, you, if you don't see me, like Charity tells me, if you don't see me, I'm in Cabanyolo. Then that is okay. But if the people say, I'm still praying on TV. Ah, you go and fetch them. You tell them that TV time is finished. And TV is other days after days. But Sunday... Let's not be in the habit of not meeting. Let's meet together at the cathedral. So I am charging you that Auntie Carol is the one who said that we have to go evangelize. You see, Zacchaeus also did evangelism. The people were judging, but Zacchaeus did evangelism, brought genuine repentance. And so when you repent and repent genuinely, the Lord forgives. Who is, who is not fit to be forgiven? We are forgiven sinners, but don't go back and sin. That is all. You see, the, the, as she was concluded, she compared the situation of Zacchaeus and the young man. For Zacchaeus, he just volunteered his property, but the young man in the gospel was not willing to sell his property. Make a solid effort to seek the Lord. This one, I love this one. Let's make solid effort. Yesterday, assistant provost was opening prayer school and then he made fun of himself that if you, sometimes the devil just tells you, today you have done a lot of ministry, you know, here is painting, the head, the back, everything, and then you cannot wake up to read the Bible. You cannot ever re, uh, get up to pray. Make solid efforts in that sitting room, in that bedroom, throw the blanket, so if somebody is saying that ah, today maybe you can stay no don't log in log in if the mbs are finished you log in sometimes god just gives if the air speak to the airway i have that challenge in my house but i tell the airway you i need to listen to the word of god so let's make deliberate deliberate moves our god and our father help us we cannot do it on our own. 
to come before you every day. Sometimes we are weak. Sometimes we are, we are tired. Sometimes we are sleepy. Sometimes we are discouraged, oh Lord. Lord, encourage one person today here by the story of Zacchaeus. Encourage somebody who said, even me, I cannot lead prayer meeting. Encourage those ones who say, for me, I cannot be a council member. Encourage one who says, me, I don't want to talk in all sense. Lord, let them be like Zacchaeus, run ahead and so that they are able to do. Lord, there are people here, very many talented people in this platform who are keeping quiet and do not even want to, to say because they think they will be judged. Lord, encourage them because today the Lord is saying repentance, then you are blessed and you are also a child of Abraham. Lord, I pray that, first of all, they will repent of judging themselves. Because, Lord, we have judged ourselves. Friends, as I pray, pray, check out yourself. There are situations where you've judged yourself. You personally, people have not even judged you, but you start judging yourself. Bring repentance. Bring repentance. You can't judge yourself and say, you. <clears throat> for me, I cannot even. For me, who tells you? Try, 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 try. Ah, me those things. Ah, me those mothers, union people. I'm not going to join. Join and make a change. Ah, me those Christian women. Fathers, union. Ah, no, 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 no. I'm not there. Join, join, join. Even when you've been in young marriage, go now and transform Fathers Union. The overnight, the overnight is today. Men, 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 men. I will work you up. Father God, we thank you. Thank you for all the men. Transform them like Zacchaeus. Tonight they will run to the cathedral. I summon them by the word of the Lord. And Father God, transformation, genuine repentance. Lord, where we have judged ourselves, where we have criticized ourselves, we repent this morning. We bring repentance over our children, over our families. And so, Lord, we pray that, Lord, we shall not be judgmental in anything. And we pray that that, Lord, genuine repentance will save us from every situation. Lord, this tax collector forgot his title. He might have been the, the, the commissioner of, of tax collection and the big head of tax collection, but he forgot. He forgot even his cars, the guards and everything, and ran ahead. He forgot everything. Lord, help us to forget our titles, to forget our, our riches, to forget what puffs us and run to the Lord. We call everyone to run to the Lord like Zacchaeus. We call everyone to bring repentance of every genuine repentance. Lord, I bring repentance over our own murmuring, grumbling, delayed action. Lord, procrastination as a cathedral. Lord, personally, Lord, there are things I've delayed to do. There are things I, I, I just say I will not do. Lord, I bring repentance. There are things when I get annoyed and say, okay, let me leave them. When they will come back. When Lord, no, no, no. The Jonah spirit. Lord, we repent. And I repent, Lord, on behalf of myself, my father's house, on behalf of the cathedral. Lord, where we have said, okay, let's sit back. Lord. We repent genuinely that we want to come back to you. We want to return to you. We want to say, Lord, help us to be Zacchaeus. Help us where we have not done things according to your will. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the Holy One of Israel. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Amen.